Aquarius starlings, welcome to my sector of the universe. This is Jasmine Capella Wellness here to help you step into your truth and star into your power. For those of you who've never been here before, welcome. Thank you so much for being here for the first time. For those of you who are returning, thank you for coming back to watch another weekly. Um, if you would like a personal reading or a live coaching session, or you want to work with me with healing, or you would like to purchase a personal tarot reading package, please hop on over to capellawellness.com. There are also links in the description box below to take you straight there. I want to wish you guys a wonderful, transformative, beautiful week. With that being said, let's get into your reading. Hey there, Taurus. Welcome to your weekly reading. How are you? Hopefully all is well in your sector of the universe. Hope things are going swimmingly for you. Happy birthday, by the way, Taurus. Happy, happy birthday. I hope you have a fantastic birthday season. All right, Taurus, what we're going to do here is, if I can get these cards to kind of shuffle... What we're going to do here is we're going to see what you're, what's going on with you right now, okay? Let's see what energy is surrounding you at this time, what obstacles you are facing, and what lesson you are learning from all of this, because this is part of your spiritual growth. This is what tarot is about. So, we're then going to see what is, um, what guidance spirit has for you to help you navigate these energies. What's going on with love and relationships for you? And we're going to take a look into what this new moon in Taurus, this solar eclipse in Taurus is bringing you, okay? What you need to pay attention to with this solar eclipse that's coming on April 30th. All right, Taurus, let's see what's going on with you. Um, if you feel drawn, check out your moon, Venus, rising, and north node signs to get a bigger picture as to what you are dealing with with the energies that are surrounding you and how to best navigate them with guidance and so on and so forth. You may be, uh, you may find that uh, some of your other placements, placements are going to resonate more than your sun sign. All right. Let's see what's going on with Taurus. Spirit guides, angels, galactic family, pleading, Syrians, please reveal to us for our highest good. What is going on with Taurus? Oh, this time, Taurus, my dear Taurus. Okay, let's see. And remember to take what resonates, leave what doesn't for somebody else who's watching this, all right? Keep your unhealthy ego at the door and make sure you're honest with yourself. We've got the five of swords and the three of, I'm sorry, the five of wands and the three of swords, okay? Um, hmm. There is some conflict and craziness going on surrounding a connection, okay? Um, again, I'm getting two messages. I'm going to go through the first one first. It's causing a lot of heartbreak. Um, there's just like this, this, it's just, I feel very heavy already, okay? So, but again, don't get caught up in that, all right? This two shall pass type of thing. But um, this, this, whatever is going on in this connection, or it even could be at work, okay? Because this is competition here. Maybe you're very disappointed with regards to, you know, people keep trying to clamor over one another. And, you know, it's like people are like even stepping on others, that type of thing. Um, whether this is work-related or um, relationship-related, again, it depends. It could even be both for at least a couple of people here, all right? There's a lot of chaos and conflict going on. Uh, you may be in the middle of an argument with someone or you continuously find yourself arguing with people, whether it was with coworkers or your significant other or counterpart or whatever this is. Um, and you just want to scream, right? Because look at her here. She has this, like her heart is tearing apart here. It's being torn in different directions or I'm hearing torn by Natalie and Brulia. That may be uh, <laughs> significant for somebody here. Um your, your heart's being pulled in different directions. And like you see it here, it's it's torn right here. The heart is torn and you're lashing out here because it's like, I can't deal with this. This is way too much, okay? And you're probably thinking, when is this going to end? Or if you're in separation from somebody, you, you're you going through this battle or something like that. And it's kind of like, when is this going to get over? When am I going to get over this? Maybe somebody here is going through the dark night of the soul, okay? I've just got that message. 
Now, um, yeah, this is, there's a lot going on in the heart space here. Um, it's time to clear this out, Taurus. Because the longer you stay in this, the longer you'll be low vibrational. And that's really, really, really going to draw in a lot more negativity. It's going to draw in a lot more of this angst here that's going on, especially within your heart space. Um, and, you know, especially if things are going working out for you right now, you continually find yourself in disappointment. It's up to you to get yourself out of this, all right? There's pain, there's suffering, there's like, you know... Maybe there's crying involved with this. Like that there's too much going on. You're being pulled in different directions. Like I said, um, your heart feels like it's being tugged in all different areas of it. And it's pulling it apart. Okay. Um, and if you're dealing with somebody who's causing this, because we do have the Knight of Cups at the bottom of the deck. Maybe it's with a water sign. Or you have water in your chart. They have water in their chart. It could very well be like someone that you really care for, you're very attracted to, and you know, they keep <laughs> I'm hearing in sinks, it's tearing up my heart. Oh my god. All these like torn tear up heart songs are coming to me. Um, that's pretty funny. Some of you are dealing with somebody who's causing this, all right? You know who this person is. Um I'm getting strongly that for some of you, a person is causing this type of energy in your heart space. You could be dealing with a heartbreaker, somebody who continues to cancel events. Maybe they say, hey, let's go out and do something. And they, oh, no, I can't. Or, you know, I'm dating somebody else or I'm going to be doing this thing and we can go as friends, but something like that. Okay, that may be resonating for some of you. And you're kind of like, what on earth? You know, why does this keep happening? If, if you are arguing, literally arguing with somebody or causing fights over somebody who keeps canceling on you, Taurus, you know what? I have to say, you're going to have to let that go because if this person keeps doing that with you, they're going through battles you know nothing about. This is what this is also, okay, with this five of wands. This person, if they're doing this, they're, they're, they're going through internal battles and, um, or maybe they're actually dealing with other people that they're in conflict with and they could very well be an individual who doesn't really plan well or they put to people vie for their attention too much and then they commit too much. All right. That's what I'm hearing. Okay. This person has a hard time of really. Uh, they don't want to disappoint others, but this is disappointment and the shadow side of this is disappointment. Okay. So this person may very well tend to overcommit and, and then they realize like if, if you're dealing with this person and they break some, some agreement with you or a date or a commitment with you, you know, it's like, oh shit, you know, I can't believe I did that again to Taurus or whatever this is. It can, or maybe Taurus, this is you doing this, but, um, there's something here about really listening to what your heart is telling you to do, okay? You don't have to overcommit yourself. And if you're dealing with somebody who does this, you have the power to walk away, all right? Nobody, no one person, no one job, no one thing is ultimately responsible for your happiness or your pain, okay? We can't expect others to fulfill us and we can't put the blame on someone for us going through this we just can't especially if it's repetitive if it's cyclic that is a huge red flag taurus for you to walk away from the situation okay whether it's job or a relationship all right maybe you somebody here you love a job or something and you just like you put your heart and soul into it and it's just not working out okay It's just not working out for you. And, you know, you try to go above and beyond and people try to tear you down, right? And you're just like, I can't take this anymore. I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm doing innovative things. I'm really going out there and putting, giving it my all, I'm, I'm being told. And I keep getting stomped on, okay, by people. It could very well be that people don't like what you're doing, Taurus, and they try to take advantage of you. It's like they're trying to one-up you and... They do these things that are kind of like backhanded or whatever because they don't like what you're doing. And so um, this is a continuous cycle for you. If this is resonating for you, if it's a job, okay, 
and you just continuously find yourself in disappointment. Okay. I'm getting a lot with this. So you have the power to get away from this energy, Taurus, whatever this is. All right. It is ultimately your responsibility. You can't put blame on anybody else. All right. That's going to be the cold, hard truth here. You'll have to do something about these energies and we can't point fingers at anybody. We have to be the ones to take it upon ourselves to understand that when we go through this, we are becoming stronger and becoming more resilient. This is like combat training right here. All this disappointment, all the heartbreak that you go through with relationships, um, partnerships, jobs, everything like that. It's leveling you up so that with all the chaos and conflict that goes on in your life, you're able to maintain your center and you're like, you know what? I'm not dealing with this. I know how to come out of this. You're able to climb through these wands here and in and, and search of the light. You are reaching for the light, Taurus, because you know the light is where it's going to bring you peace, clarity, truth. You're not going to deal with everybody here who's going to continue to be in the lower vibrational energies, right? You're going to come out of this. And the more challenges you face, the more disappointment you face, the better off you're actually going to be, Taurus, because you're going to be learning. It's it's spiritual. Uh, yeah, it's like um, um, a warrior in training, a spiritual warrior in training. You become more spiritually strong and have that enormous spiritual growth where you're this king of wands. That's what you're training for. Where anything that goes on in your life cannot bring you down. It's like you climb up and then someone kicks you off and you go down. And some of you stay down and it's like, I'm disappointed. I can't deal with this anymore. And you don't get back up. You failed if you don't get back up. So this is about you. No, I'm going to climb higher. I'm going to follow that light. I'm not going to listen to what everybody's doing. I mean, paying attention to what everybody's doing. I'm going to come out of this. I am coming out of this. But it's up to you to do that. Okay. Nobody's going to save you but yourself. And if you're trying to compete with others, okay, you know, there's no competition. That actually doesn't exist. The competition that you have is only with yourself. And it's a matter of whether you're going to come out of this or not. And you really going to have to really pay attention to what your heart's telling you. Be in tune with your emotions and don't be afraid of what your heart is leading you towards. Okay. And if you're dealing with people who are causing this stuff, again, you have to reach higher. It's about following the light. It's the light of truth. It's, it's, it's happiness. It's joy. It's peace. It's tranquility. Not chaos, conflict, and, and, and you know craziness here. That's not where you're supposed to be at, Taurus. But it's up to you to get up there. Nobody's going to do it for you but yourself. You're the one who gets out of this. But you are learning from all of this right now. Trust me, I know, because I've been a lot of this, both in relationships and in jobs. They were my greatest teachers. The greatest heartbreaks and disappointments and sadness and sorrow with these challenges that it brings, they are going to be your greatest teachers. And you're really going to do some serious leveling up with this. Now, I'm getting another message for another group of people. I'm getting you're in separation with someone. And it's it's tearing you apart like that NSYNC song, right? You can't deal with this anymore. And it's really getting at you. There's this energy of you know you need to find more harmony and peace in that heart space. Something about making amends. There's misunderstandings here. Okay. Either somebody broke your heart, Taurus, or you broke somebody's heart. And you're realizing through this separation, it was getting to you, it was helping you heal. It was helping you realize that being sensitive and being vulnerable is not a bad thing. That you needed to follow your heart with whatever this is. Okay whether it's a job or a relationship. You had this feeling about somebody, Taurus, or this person had this feeling about you, and you felt a lot of love for them. There was this strong attraction to this person. 
And you didn't understand it then, but you understand it now. Because Five of Wands talks about misunderstandings. And again, it ties into previous heartbreaks and disappointments. You thought that following your heart was always leading you to some sort of demise from the heart space is what I'm getting. It sounds kind of weird, but that's what they told me. But what you ended up realizing here was that your heart was actually preparing you for the greatest love of your life. That's what I just got. And all the battles that you went through, all the heartbreaks that you went through, it was preparing you for the love of a lifetime. Your counterpart, your soulmate. Because if you didn't learn how to heal properly from all those previous disappointments and relationships, then you were going to continue to attract people who had broken hearts too. And when you have that, there's no harmony in a relationship. There's no peace. There's no balance. There's no mended heart there. Look how barren this card is. When a heart isn't fully healed, you attract people who haven't healed either. And that never makes a true love companionship. There's no true love there when the heart is torn like that. It's a blocked heart chakra. Yet this time around, you're feeling, okay, you know what? I feel this way about somebody. I can't be afraid of expressing my feelings anymore. I can't be afraid of the vulnerabilities or my sensitivities. I'm going to come forward with expressing how I truly feel. There could be a proposal here, a, you know, an engagement. Um, a date, an invitation to something romantic, okay? I mean, this guy's got the roses. Roses may be significant for you. He's on a beach. There's a, there's a, 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 you know, a white stallion here. Breaking free of the need to be in this, this heartache. Like, I can't deal with the separation anymore. I can't deal with these internal battles with not expressing my true emotions. I have to let this out. And you're starting to tap into that bowl, that Ace of Cups right there. Because you found your Ace of Cups. You understand what true love is, what unconditional love is. And with this person, this whole separation that you went through was to get you to learn that. Misunderstandings. Again. I'm hearing Foolish Heart by Journey, right? Actually, Steve Perry does it technically. But if you look at the lyrics to that song, he's hoping that when his heart's telling him to follow through with this relationship, this woman that he likes, that he loves, apparently, you know, he doesn't want to get his heart broken again. You've been wrong before. Don't be wrong anymore, right? But what Steve Perry didn't realize was that when he was following his heart, all of this the, the, the broken hearts that he went to, they were through, he, they were preparing him for a deeper love. And that's what this is about. So, either you or your person, Taurus, you're not afraid to follow it anymore. Because you've healed from a lot of those past hurts. That's why we end up going through these types of relationships, guys, because we end up learning how to heal from them fully so that we can prepare ourselves for the, for the true love that God has waiting for us. So there's something here where somebody is coming in or this is you, Taurus. You're understanding this now and you're not afraid to follow your heart. Again, it's like, look up the lyrics to the Foolish Heart song by Steve Perry. Okay. Life is going to have disappointments. You cannot have dark without light. You cannot have rainbows and unicorns without pain and suffering. <laughs> they go hand in hand. Nobody says this, was a lot, this life was a walk in the park. Okay? 
So that's what I'm getting from this. So let's see. Let's see what the obstacle here is. What's the obstacle in this situation? Spirit guides, angels, galactic family, Pleiadian, Syrians. Please and thank you. Thank you for your wisdom, your guidance, your support, and your clarity. There we go. Ha. We have the Ten of Swords. Okay. We got three of swords and ten of swords, swords coming out, guys. All right, Taurus. So your biggest obstacle at this time here is feeling like a victim. Betrayal. Even a divorce for some of you, okay? Remember, take what resonates with what doesn't for somebody else. Maybe you've been so brokenhearted by a divorce and it just may give you, gave you a skewed vision as to what true love really was. Maybe you were very vulnerable with this person that you got divorced from um, and you were very sensitive and they made fun of you for it. They, they made you think um, that that wasn't a good quality about yourself, something along those lines, right? Because the Knight of Cups is a very sensitive person. Again, if it's your water sign, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, or you have that in your chart, you know, you tend to be more sensitive than most, especially if you have a lot of water in your chart, okay? So maybe you dealt with somebody like that, or you continuously found yourself in, you know, these disappointing jobs or relationships, and you're like saying it's done. I, I can't deal with this anymore. But what's happened is, Taurus, for some of you, this pain has gotten so great. You have 10 swords instead of three in your back, okay? That's the Rider weight, though. But look at this card. This is what I love about this card with the um, Lightseer Tarot. She doesn't have any swords in her back. It's kind of like illusions. You think you've hit rock bottom, you think that there's all been, always been these betrayals in your life, in your relationships, in your jobs, but the, the swords are lessons. They are life's experiences and challenges. Again, what the challenges with that five of wands. They're your greatest teachers. And then you get to a point where it's like, I can't deal with this. How can this get any worse? But you don't stay dead on the floor. You get back up. And this card is saying that. You don't have all those swords in your back, Taurus. What I'm getting, this might trigger some of you. When you get to this, right? When you're experiencing three of swords and it's repetitive, I said it's cyclical, you go from three to ten. When you realize that you're going through this, you have the power to stop it and walk away from this before you get to the 10. That's one thing I didn't learn, okay? I'm gonna be completely vulnerable here like the Knight of Cups. It's one thing that I didn't learn. This kept happening, especially with my counterpart, and then it was it got from three to 10. When I knew, my gut was telling me, my heart was telling me, Jess, you need to walk away from this. But I didn't, okay? And then I had to realize, oh, this is not the worst of it. I'm not a victim. I have the power to change this situation. I have the power to walk away. This is exactly what I was talking about. You turn around, you do an about face tours, and you head towards a new beginning, a new dawn. There's always a, a darkness before dawn, right? Again, you cannot have pain and suffering. You cannot have unicorns and rainbows without the pain and suffering. You cannot have flowers without the rain. Every path has its puddles, but they help you to grow. You start realizing you have way more power than you think you do. You release yourself from this pain and suffering, this really, really harsh energy here. And you say, you know what? I'm not a victim. I'm not going to stay in this so-called betrayal mode, this, this victim mode. No, that's not who I am. You're going to be the victor, not the victim. 
and you find that victory within yourself, Taurus, and you go head towards the horizon there, and you're like, I'm heading towards the light. It's exactly what I was saying with the five of wands. You're heading towards the light here, not dark. You're transmuting dark into light because you know there's something better. You know there's a, a brighter beginning here. The sun's always shining, even though with the earth rotating and we have darkness and stuff, the sun never disappears. It's always there. The light is always there. It's, it's about our perspective of it. It's up to you to see that or not. And you have the support of your guides or angels. That's what I'm getting with these crows up here. They're going to help elevate you. They're going to help you walk towards that light. Because you know being rock bottom, feeling like a failure, feeling like you've been betrayed all the time, that's not where you're supposed to be. That's not where God dwells. God doesn't dwell down in the Ten of Swords, guys. If you want God to help you here, if you want to see more of that light, you have to get up and walk towards it. It's up to you. And for some of you, this has been very hard to get out of. Some of you, there's this victimization thing that has been really blocking you, not only from moving forward, but from your abundance, from having true love in your life. And there are a few of you where a divorce, you couldn't get over a divorce. There was a very, very um, painful divorce that a few of you went through here. It was a very painful marriage, okay? That doesn't dictate who you are, Taurus. It doesn't, it doesn't determine how your, the rest of your love life is going to be. But you're the one who has to get out of that mindset. That you will find love again. That there will be true love because it does exist. But there's a lot of stuff that you have to overcome. A lot of these lessons are trying to get you to see the bigger picture. To get more clarity and say, you know what? That's in the past. That's done. What am I going to learn from this? How am I going to move forward? All right. The bottom of the deck is the Six of Pentacles with this. Maybe you've been giving too much conditional giving. You gave and you gave and you gave and you gave. Again, this is this is my story, guys. This is why whoever gets drawn into my readings, I utilize my experiences to teach others. I gave so much not just with my counterpart, but another relationship to include my previous marriage. I was attracting more of this. There was no balance of equal give and take in my life, in my marriage, in my job even. I went through all of it, guys. All of it. I was so disappointed and so distraught. I'm like, what the hell, man? Why, why do I keep running into this? And then I realized it was me. I was doing too much of the above and beyond because I have Leo in my chart. I'll have a lot of Leo in my chart. So that was like very ambitious. I had to tone it down a bit. I was giving way too much of myself to others. And when my gut told me to pull back and to stop doing that, and I didn't listen, that's why I said, I attracted more of that five of wands, three of swords energy to the point where it got to ten of swords. I was done. I was done. I said, I need to do something about this. And I walked away and I decided to leave my career, walk away from my counterpart. I stopped dating. I stopped focusing on the outside world and I was focusing on Jess and Jess alone. And of course, I have a son, if you don't already know. So me being a single parent, I had that to tend to, but I really had to put myself as a priority. I had to give to myself. I had to start utilizing my time, energy, and my talents for the greater good of humanity. I had to understand what equal give and take was because that is part of a law here, right? One of the laws of the universe here with the law of equal give and take. What you put into the universe is what you get back. But when you put too much in there and you don't allow yourself to receive, that, you know, causes distortion, right? So I had to learn a lot from this. I learned I had to learn to give to myself first and foremost. And everything started to shift. I don't have chaos in my life. 
I don't have conflict. I'm no longer beating myself up either because I would self-sabotage too. What did I do wrong? I can't believe I did that. Why does this keep happening? Maybe I should have done this or whatever, whatever. No, it all stopped. And then I learned to utilize my God-given gifts to help others. This pays off your karma when you do that. What you put in, you'll get back. But you have to be cognizant of what you're putting in. If you're giving the universe negative energy, you're going to get back negative energy. So for some of you, it could even be a money issue. Maybe this divorce cleared you out, cleaned you out. And you're afraid to get into a relationship again or love again because you're afraid if you get married to this person, the same thing will happen. Remember, guys, you are the magician. Your thoughts create your reality. So if that's in your mind space, and this is not going to resonate with everybody, but it is, if it is resonating with you, if that's in your mind space, guess what? You're going to manifest that same thing. It will happen again if you believe that it will. That's how it works. So if you're in these jobs, these relationships, you know, maybe somebody's underpaid here in a job. Walk away from it. There is something better. You're putting more into a relationship than the other person. Walk away. There has to be equal give and take there. There's no harm, harmony in a relationship when that doesn't exist. I'm also getting for the other group here where somebody's going to come forward and express their feelings and say, you know, I misunderstood what this connection was about. I was afraid to follow my heart again because of what happened in the past. I was beating myself up because of the pain I caused you. But through the separation, I learned a lot what love really is. And I healed from that. And this person went through so much with this that they hit rock bottom. And now they're saying, you know what? The worst is over. When I come forward with expressing my emotions and, and clearing the air I'm hearing, I express my love or I go forward with this proposal. I go forward with this invitation for a date or a trip or something like that. Or a proposal to invitation to have a heart to heart conversation because that's what a Knight of Cups does. Laying all the cards out on the table, being vulnerable, like expressing their emotions, not being afraid to wear their heart on their sleeve. They know that when they do that, this, all of these swords are going to fall out and they're going to be completely free and clear of this pain that they've been dealing with because they haven't been able to express their emotions. They're going to give to you what you gave to them, but tenfold is what I'm hearing. There's a gift here that this person's giving you. Again, with that Knight of Cups here, they're going to give you a gift. They may even be helping you out with something financial. If you're, you know, you're having issues with finances, they may feel that from you or you tell them and they say, hey, you know what? I'm going to bail you out, not from jail. That's not what I'm saying. I'm going to help you with this, right? I'm hearing for somebody here, there's somebody who's not getting enough child support. I don't know where that came from, but that's what I got. And this person's going to help with that, okay? That's for like one person here. But this Knight of Cups who's coming in, you know, not only are they going to really express to you how they truly feel, and they're going to invite you somewhere to talk about this, and they're going to be very romantic. Like I said, like what we saw that Knight of Cups, there's something about a trip or something, maybe to an island or a beach or I don't know what, but, but something, they're preparing something romantic for you. And there's going to be a gift given during this uh, event, this date, this trip, whatever it is. Um, could even be an engagement ring because that could be six of pentacles, right? Somebody here could be your, the, this Knight of Cups could be wealthy now. 
and they could be a philanthropist and they love to give and they, they have a, a soft heart and they really want to give to others who are suffering, who are in pain, you know, because they've been through this and they may be helping others who have gone through what they did. And now they want to give back to you, but more than what you gave to them because they see this now. They were in a lot of pain because you were trying to help them out with what they were going through. You were trying to give them. Maybe you gave them gifts. Okay. Maybe you gave them gifts for us or the, your person gave you gifts or whatever, however you want to take this. But you were doing it out of the kindness of your heart. You weren't trying to manipulate. You weren't trying to sabotage. You weren't trying to do anything but be kind and generous. That is the Six of Pentacles energy. And this person took that for granted. They thought you were trying to buy them out, quote unquote. They thought that you were trying to give them these gifts or be kind and generous to them because you were looking for something else. That's the misunderstanding here. They must they mistook your kindness for something negative, for something else, for something they thought that you were gonna try to control them by doing this. And they see this clearly now that that was not the case. And their heart was telling them that, but they had a hard time believing that because other people that they dealt with, they did that to them and they they um controlled them. They sabotaged them. They um tried to climb over them. Right. It was, it was like these hostilities here, these, these it caused a lot of um, major disappointments. So now this person sees this now. And they they are they are ashamed that they did take you for granted. Because you were ultimately really being kind of generous to them. And now they want to do that for you. But this person I'm getting has really planned something quite significant and they're really going to change things around because they don't they don't want to be in this this really heavy place anymore. Maybe they've kind of um fluctuated between Three of Swords, Ten of Swords, or both of these energies. They were got feeling fine one day and then not the next. It depends. So, um, But for another group of you, this person is, is understanding what true equal give and take is. And that being kind to others, you get kindness back. When you're not kind to others, you get a lot of not so great things back, right? Law of attraction, too. What you're vibrating at is what you're going to attract. Let's see what the lesson here is, other than everything I just said. What is the biggest lesson that Taurus is learning from all this? Spirit guides, angels, galactic family, Pleiadian, Syrians, please and thank you. Thank you for your wisdom, your guidance, your support, and your clarity. I heard trust. That's what I just heard. What is the biggest lesson here that Taurus is learning from this situation? I just heard the worst is over now, Taurus. Good things are coming your way. Wow. It's another night. It's the Knight of Swords. Okay. So, the lesson here is to really just like take things slow, not to rush things. There's something about um, either you or someone being very impulsive. Someone who's very scattered, they don't know how to channel their energy. Something goes wrong and they tend to panic. Um, you know, it's like flight or flight mode with this uh, card and there's a bird flying, excuse me, in the sky here. It's like when something goes wrong or someone could just very well be, you know, trying to avoid 
heartbreak or something. It's like, no, I don't want to go through this again. And then psh, they come in and out, right? This is the in and out card. <laughs> this is the person, as soon as they start to feel, as soon as they feel vulnerable, they shoot off. And it's like, they're not just walking away from this. They are running and they're getting on a motorcycle. And motorcycles can, you know, they they can be faster than cars, right? And it's more easier for a guy a, or a girl on a motorcycle to weave in and out of traffic. So that's why this person, it's like they want to get out of there fast. As soon as they feel that in their heart, it's like zoom. They just like, I can't, I can't. That's why this person comes in and out, Taurus, or it's you. The moment you start to feel, you take off. And you go in the opposite direction. But man, do you bail out the door? It's kind of like some of, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm visualizing this is hysterical. You know, in the Kool Aid commercials, <laughs> when the Kool Aid man bursts through the door. Guys, you have no idea how that stuff really, really cracks me up. I can see it a million times in a row, and I would still laugh just as hard. That's what I'm seeing with this person, Taurus, or you. Again, take it how it resonates when that happens, it's like, it gets deep, right? And they feel again with that foolish heart song by Steve Perry. As soon as that happens, it's like they burst through the door, the, the wall. They don't even go through the front door. They go through the wall and then they're out. And then they're out of your life, like a flash of, of lightning. And it's just like, what just happened? Can't keep running away, Taurus, anymore. You started to do that. And then every time you come back or you would feel again, it ended up getting to this because you kept doing this. You kept running. And running, running, and running, running, and running, running. I forgot. It's, it's a Black Eyed Peas song. Maybe that's the title. I can't remember. You couldn't face your fears. You couldn't face heartbreak again. You didn't want to face a divorce again. So you're like, nope, I'm bailing. But what was that doing for you, Taurus? It wasn't doing you any good, was it? And now you're seeing this clearly now because look what's at the bottom of the deck. You know that that cycle needs to end. You cannot keep running from love. You cannot keep running from you know, avoiding like either these disappointments and this this sadness happens, this heartbreak happens. You can't keep running away from that. You have to face it and you have to deal with it and transmute those energies into light. It has to end. You have to break that cycle. There's something about you keep causing these delays in your life because you're avoiding the truth of the situation. You feel stuck because you have this idea, you wanna take action, you wanna to rush towards something, you wanna do something and then you pull back from it. And then you get into more of this Ten of Swords energy. But that's what the lesson here is to end that. When God gives you the green light, okay, when he gives you that ambition and that drive to do something, you go do it without fear because God's got your back. Again, you have the support of the higher realms here and you know this, Taurus. You can't keep running away. God's like, the cycle's got to end, Taurus. They're waiting for you. They're, there's a grand new beginning waiting for you. You just have to stop running. It could very well be the runner in, in, in a twin flame connection. And I don't like utilizing that term because my guides do not like the twin flame term. Again, I want to put labels on it, but that's a much higher uh, type of... Um, divine relationship here. So I call it light counterpart if you don't already know this, but I like the leader follower. Okay. I like that better.
But yes, there is a sense of where usually divine masculine is the one who runs. The cycle of running has to end, Taurus, if you haven't ended it yet. You can't keep running away from your feelings. You can't keep running away from what your heart tells you. You can't keep running away from what God is telling you in your heart space. Especially with these misunderstandings. You know you have to clear up these misunderstandings, Taurus. You can't be afraid of it anymore. Again, if you think you're going to have your heart broken again, that's exactly what's going to manifest. You have to have a positive mindset. Others of you, you're dealing with somebody who keeps coming in and out of your life for the reasons what I was talking about. This person leaves very quickly because there's still healing that they have to do. And for some of you, you're dealing with somebody who may have very well had a very, very tough divorce, okay? A very tough marriage. Someone's heart really was ripped apart, okay? Like, it's not just a little bit of, I'm breaking up with you, goodbye, you know, we're going our separate ways. Uh, man, journey keeps coming to my reading. Um, your person, or it was you, Taurus, dealt with somebody in a, it could be a relationship or a marriage, take out it resonates. It was tough for them. It wasn't just a goodbye. Like I said, we're going separate ways. That's it. Okay, cool. This was a relationship where the other individual really tore them apart. I mean, it was bad, guys. I'm feeling it very strongly. It was not good whatsoever. They stomped on it. They set the heart on fire. They got burned. It's like their heart ended up being almost completely obliterated. That is very hard for someone to come out of, especially if you are a Pisces, okay? If you're dealing with a Pisces, or you have, you, you, you're a Pisces or whatever, when that happens to you, out of all the zodiac signs, you have the hardest time of coming out of that, of healing. It takes you much longer to heal from that type of uh, heart obliteration is what I'm hearing, okay? So if you're dealing somebody with that Taurus, like who's gone through this Taurus, you have to give them time to heal. That is not easy to come out of, especially if this person really loved their spouse and their spouse, spouse, their spouse really tore them apart. That's hard. You can't fault someone for going through that. But then again, that was a huge lesson for them to learn. Maybe that person knew that that person was no good and they just like they fell head over heels for them anyway. And they didn't listen to their heart. And it got them into that. Okay? So, if you're dealing with somebody who keeps coming in and out, it's because th th they have a hard time. They don't want to get broken again. They don't want to get burned again. And you have to respect that. You can't force somebody to love you. You can't force somebody to heal either. You can't force somebody to heal faster than you. They need to learn from this, okay? And the other message is with that Knight of Cups who's coming in, they are coming in hot. They're coming in real fast. They're like, they know everything I just said, I can't keep going on in these circles anymore, anymore with running away from my feelings. I know I have to clear up these misunderstandings. I cannot, I don't want to be separation anymore. It's been too much. I have too much love for this person. I have to say something and I have to have a heart conversation. I have to explain to them what happened, what I was dealing with, what I needed to heal from, what I was afraid of. This person knows they need to do this now because, again, they've been given the green light. They're rushing towards you, Taurus. They could very well, like very soon, get in their car. Maybe they have a motorcycle and just, I need to see Taurus now. They can't wait any longer. That's why there's running 
to you, though. They're no longer running from you. They're going to run towards you because they knew running from you needs to end. There is a great success here. They've come full circle because they've learned so much. They've actually fully healed. For some of you, your person has fully healed. It took them a long time, though. But they needed that time to fully heal so that when they come forward towards you, they won't go back to doing what they did again. Okay. There's going to be big endings and a huge new beginning coming, Taurus. Nine of Pentacles. See, there's success. There's victory right here. This person has found contentment within themselves. No more fear-based thinking. They are self-fulfilled. They feel confident. They know their worth. They built something for themselves. They found their inner worth. They didn't find that, find that outside of them. And now they've completed that cycle with learning how to be content within themselves. With believing in themselves and no longer giving in to fear. That their vibrational uh, energies, their positive mindset is what's going to bring about more positive things. They've learned this now. This is a huge achievement right here. Okay. There's also, for others of you, you're no longer going to be single because this person's coming in. I mean, it's going to change real fast. This cycle that you're in, this chapter... This book that you are in in life, Taurus, it's closing and a new one is going to be opening. And for a few of you, that means your single life is over. Because for the others of you too, you've reached this nine of pentacles state. You found happiness and joy within yourself. You found the luxuries of life within yourself. You found things that made you happy that had nothing to do with money, material things that you never thought would make you happy. You learned to be happily single. And because you're vibrating at that high energy now, you're bringing about this person because this person did this too. And now your single life is ending and now you're coming um, together with somebody. Oh my God, 10 of cups at the top of the deck. See? <laughs> there you go. You're coming together with someone. There is the divine relationship that both of you have been seeking. The harmonious, blissful relationship right here it's really a companionship there may be a blending of families here um, or you're going to start a family it's going to be a very happy home very happy family this is the true love right here and you guys are going to build this beautiful home together there's also marriage with this this is what this person wants with you that's why i said your single life is going to end and you're going to have this now and this person wants this with you because they know they can have this. They see it a lot more clearly now that it, it is possible. This is the happily ever after. This is the um, uh, storybook ending. They didn't think this type of love, this type of home, this type of relationship was possible. This type of family was possible. But God has shown them that it is. Because they had to believe the impossible. And what? Through God, all things are possible. Alrighty, let's get into your guidance. Holy cow, I've been off of YouTube for two weeks. And honestly, guys, I was kind of a little bit concerned if I was going to be able to, to channel the way that I do. But I think it's, it's way different now. <laughs> let's see what the guidance is. What guidance do we have for Taurus? Please and thank you. Oh, I think that was the healed healing heal, healer card or something like that, but it flipped back in. Do some research. You need more information about the situation. Why is it not? focusing okay that doesn't really happen sorry guys i don't know why it's not focusing 
If you need more information about the situation, look into it further before proceeding. That's weird. It's not focusing. Anyway, I'm pretty sure you guys can trust. You see the do some research card. All right. Bottom of the deck is your wish is granted. What you've asked for becomes, is coming true. Why won't you focus? Okay, this is a little strange. All right, guys, well, there, you can see it there. So, what do you know what I got from this, guys? Some of you who are in this light counterpart twin flame connection, what I'm hearing is that either you or your person need to do some more research about what this connection is about, why you're going through heartbreak and disappointments and stuff like that, especially if you're in these types of connections. You're going to learn about what the true purpose of, of what the connection you're in is about, right? This is what I tried to teach. Um, there's a higher purpose here, right? Again, doing, getting that knowledge, all right? As what I said, they're your greatest teachers, all right? Your challenges, your disappointments, all the heartbreaks, they're your greatest teachers. You learn from that, okay? So this is confirming what I was talking about earlier. And maybe some of you need to look into more as to what you are experiencing, especially if you are in a light counterpart to inflame connection. All right. There's a lot more to that than to just the romance and stuff like that. That has to get out of your mindset. That's still in your mindset. Okay. So you're learning a lot from this situation and so is your person. Okay. Again, learning, they can't keep running from their feelings. It's like you're running on a treadmill and you're not going anywhere, right? I'll read the book because they always want me to read the book, but it has to do with understanding that when you pray for something, it's going to be granted to you, but you have to believe in it. Again, believing the impossible with the Ten of Cups energy. You have to believe in the magic here. Believe that it will happen and it will happen. That's a hard thing for people to really understand. So I'm going to read the do some research card and the um, wish card. So the do some research card and whatever I say, guys, if it hits you, that's your message. This card indicates that you're trying to make a decision without a full understanding of the situation. Spend some time doing research, including asking the universe and other people for information. Follow any leads, such as intuitive feelings, the Knight of Cups, signs, or someone saying something that clicks as the truth, and you'll receive the facts that you need. As you get this information, you may alter your original plans. Don't worry. This is a positive change that will garner you more blessings in the long run. Read, study, or take a class. Trust in the synchronicities that occur. Interview an expert, ask someone to mentor you in a new profession. If your gut tells you no, trust this instinct. So your wish is granted card says the fairies know how to magically manifest all their material needs and desires. And they also assist people like yourself in making their dreams come true. This card represents that the fairies are very happy to grant your wish. They work in concert with all the universal forces and energies, but you can also help your prayer rapidly manifest by going with the flow in your own life stay as centered and peaceful as possible because negativity could block your desire i talked about that earlier go outside in nature often to keep your spirit soaring with the magical energies of joy and gratitude the additional meanings are a loved one is planning a surprise for you yep i picked that up your thoughts are manifesting into form very quickly so be sure that your silent prayers and spoken words are aligned with your desires and not your fears trust in the universe Keep a sense of wonder and awe. So I just heard when I read the a loved one is planning a surprise for you. This person, I said, they've been planning something. They've been doing a lot of work on, on making sure that this goes right this time around. Okay. I'm hearing they want to make it up to you. They've been looking up things or maybe looking up places to take you to or looking up... Um, uh, places, maybe you've told them something as to, you know, a place that you want to travel to or what you like to be around or what you are, 
what your hobbies are, what interests you have. And they've been looking up things on on um, what to do with this date, with this invitation, with this trip, okay? Um, so yeah, that could very well be for like a few of you here where your person is doing this. Really looking into how they're going to surprise you or how they're going to come forward. But it's it's kind of like, I heard going out with a bang. <laughs> They really, really want to make it up to you. Again, it's that Six of Pentacles energy, right? Um, they've been looking into a lot of things. They've also looked into what this connection was about. Again, the misunderstandings there. There are a few of you where your person, uh, they know that you are divine counterparts. They've done a lot of research on what this connection is and that they, they realize so many things that they're now like, okay, I'm ready to go forward. I see what this is. Let's see what other guidance we have for you. There's a lot of fairies in this reading. Fairy guides, whenever you are feeling blue, don't fear the fairies are protecting you. See, you are protected. That's what I was saying. I don't know why I won't focus, guys. This is really strange, because it usually does, and I'm doing this during the daytime. Anyway, I read it. Learn, oh goodness, a little nudge. It's now your turn, put on your thinking cap. It's time to learn. What was I talking about? Learning your lessons, your life's experience. Again, 10 of swords, do some research card, see? It's time to learn. Learn from these experiences, guys. Bottom of the deck is animal healing. No matter the creature, earth, sky, or sea, animals show us how true love can be. Maybe you have a pet surrounding you or, you know, think about how, if those of you who have pets, look at how you love your pet. Let's say you have a cat. Your cat could, like, throw up all over the place or, like, tear apart your, car, tear apart your couch, you know, run away and come back. Do you chastise the cat, really? Do you stop loving your cat because of that? I don't know why I'm saying cat, but that might be relevant for somebody. But you get my point, right? There's something here with learning, actually, with how you deal with a pet or an animal, right? We're not really ones to go out there and, and, and be you know, conditionally loving to animals, right? We're not like that. But it's different with humans, is it not? Take this how it resonates, right, with this animal healing, okay? There could also be maybe some of you need to get a pet to help with your healing. That's what I did. It's funny because my counterpart got a cat, and he told me about his cat, and then I ended up getting one too, and she has been really helpful, especially during the times where I wouldn't have my son, um, especially when my son would be away with his dad for some time. You know, um, my cat actually helped you know, when he was gone. So maybe there's something along those lines with that, all right? Okay, so we're now going to see what is going on with love for you. Love and relationships, guys. Love and relationships. Take it how it resonates. It could be with a person of interest or it could be a co-worker, a friend, a sibling. Take it how it resonates. What's going with love and relationships for Taurus? Spirit guides, angels, galactic family, Pleading Syrians, please and thank you. Thank you for your wisdom, your guidance, your support, and your clarity. Well, Cupid's arrow, have faith, love is coming, surprise invitation or meeting hesitation. Oh, what did I say? See? I don't know why it's not. I think the light got too bright. Something weird's going on, guys. I'm going to have to check my camera after. It says it, guys. You have to trust me on this. I think you can see a little bit of it. Have faith. Love is coming. Surprise invitation or meeting. So see what I talked about? This person keeps running. There's hesitation. There's, there's still a little bit of hesitation that this person has. Again, that lesson is to stop hesitating, get on it, and go. Because for you, Taurus, or your person, God has given you the green light, and you probably keep getting the Knight of Swords in readings. You probably keep seeing it, and you're like, oh, shit, I do. You're hesitating. 
You don't have to hesitate anymore. You already know very well, Taurus, what it is that you need to do. And for the others of you, have faith with this, okay? There is a surprise invitation. Your person's got hit with Cupid's arrows, but they got hit a long time ago, but they didn't know what to do with that. They know what to do with it now, all right? They have to end the cycle of, of, of keep running and, and disappearing back and forth, okay? Um, but like I said, this person is going to surprise you with something. Oh, wow. It's a soulmate's card. Soul connection, partnership agreement, soul contract. What did I say? It's for some of you, you're not going to be single anymore. All right. There's the partnership. They know. See, with the research, okay, look. They know you have a soul contract with them. This is a deep soul connection. They want this partnership. And they're going to complete that soul contract. Cassette, outdated thinking, conditioning, replaying events over in your head. See? Self-sabotage right there. Beating themselves up. Man, you know what? I can't believe I did this. I can't believe I did this. Why did I do this? That conditioning there. Again, with that heartbreaker, if they were in a divorce, a relationship that was really, really brutal, they kept replaying that. They had to clear that. They had to heal from that. There's also something about with the hesitation to, to come through or to offer this invitation for a date or whatever this is, a trip, okay? They kept thinking how they were going to do this. Again, with the research card, how am I going to come forward? How am I going to talk to Taurus? How am I going to do this? And um, they were like, it was causing them to hesitate. They overthought this. Some of them were overthinking too much. Maybe they have been preparing for a long time on what to say to you to the point where they program it in their head. And then something would happen. They would hesitate a little bit on it. But then again, they had to have faith. They had to stop going over, over and over in the head. And God's like, okay, Taurus, you need to stop hesitating. It's time to go. That Knight of Swords energy. And then the bottom of the deck is truth. Here, the sword and rose. It's clarity, truth, revelation, solidarity, force, honor, protection, and power. I have no idea why these are not. It's got to be too much. All this light in the back here. I've never seen my altar this bright before, honestly. So, there you have it. Taurus. We're now going to see what this solar eclipse in Taurus is bringing you. Oops. What's going to be happening with this solar eclipse in Taurus? Spirit guides, angels, galactic family, Pleiadians, Syrians, please and thank you. Thank you for your wisdom, your guidance, your support, and your clarity. It happens on April 30th, if you get 30th, if you guys didn't catch that before. And Taurus, this new moon in Taurus with the solar eclipse in Taurus in your sign, this is going to be big for you. It's going to be very significant for those fixed signs. If you have placements in Taurus, Cancer, Leo, or Aquarius, you are going to be affected the most. All right. Let's see what this solar eclipse is bringing you. Wow. Your commitment is being tested the first quarter moon. You're going to be tested on whether you can go through with what you need to do, Taurus. If you're the person who has to come forward and communicate your feelings to someone, express your feelings to someone. Or others of you going through this um, heartbreak and, you know, the person coming in and out of your life. Are you going to continue to give your power away or are you going to take it back? Because Pluto goes retrograde before April 30th, if you don't already know. Pluto, that's what Pluto's going to do. How much power have you given? How much power have you taken? How much power, yeah, how much power are you giving away? And if Pluto starts realizing you're continuing to give away your power to somebody who keeps coming in and out of your life, or you're dealing with a job where there's all this like craziness going on, impulsiveness and hurtful people and whatever this is for you, 
Pluto is going to come in and really do something eye-opening for you. All right. Bottom of the deck is show the world the real you, the full moon in Aquarius. I'm going to read the book because I always do because they always want me to read the book. Let's look at the first quarter moon. Your commitment is being tested. There could be some challenges coming your way, but they're just the universe's way of testing you. The first quarter moon calls for you to face any hurdles with confidence. What do you actually think is possible? If you believe you can do it, then you probably can. See, I was talking about that before. If you spend your life affirming that something is too big for you to surmount, it probably is. See how it works? Do you believe your dreams will come true or have you secretly already given up? Showing some commitment now will help you move towards your desired outcome. What you believe to be true is true for you, so believe in yourself. I am committed to my dreams and move towards them with confidence. The answer to your question is yes, but not yet. You're halfway to your goal. You still need to put in a bit more effort. Sometimes you just need to realize how much we want something. You need to recommit to someone or something. That's a big message for somebody here. Someone got hit with that real hard. In the lunar cycle, the first quarter moon comes between the new moon and the full moon. It's still time when the sun and the moon are at a hard astrological angle to each other, and this can prompt a small crisis. No matter when you pull this card, you need to see any dramas as a stepping stone to where you want to be. It can also be a time when you need to stay strong through the storm. Five of Wands is that exactly. Let's look at the full moon in Aquarius. Full moon in Aquarius. Show the world the real you. This card brings a message from the cosmos that you need to detach a little from whatever situation you're talking about, asking about. Someone might be keeping you at arm's length now, but it's no bad thing. It's important for you to allow life to unfold and progress, even if change seems like a frightening prospect. If you've been holding yourself back from showing the world the real you, this card reminds you that your unique characteristics are what you, make you special. In a relationship, are you being too aloof or detached? Go ahead and be yourself and whatever is coming up for you. Be aware of your feelings, but also be prepared to move on. Don't lose the beauty and romance of life. You are in too much in your head. Get into your heart. A friend needs you. Be there for them. A situation is going to take a very unexpected turn. Drastic changes with this Knight of Swords. It's everything that's going on with the solar eclipse, guys. Every full moon is a time to release and let go, but the addition of Aquarian energy to the mix triples that message. Aquarius is the opposite of clinging and pulling this card at any time suggests either you need to let go or someone is thinking they are the ones who need to let go, perhaps of you. What needs to go? What is the right thing to do? Whatever happens next could be highly unconventional or unexpected. Prepare. You've been given your so-called warning, Taurus. But for all... A few of you, this unexpected stuff, it's going to be very, very positive, okay? It depends on where you are on your journey. Holy cow, look at all the light on the altar. Okay, guys, let me see. Can I see my hand? Yeah, I can. Um, well, Taurus, that concludes your weekly reading. I hope this was helpful for you. Um, again, if you like a personal reading or life coaching session, you want to purchase a tarot package or you want to chat to me for anything at all, go to capellawellness.com. Check out the description box. Um, here's my cat again. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, anything you need, feel free to reach out, okay? All right, Taurus, that concludes your weekly reading. Thank you so very much for watching this video, for subscribing to this channel if you haven't already, and for illuminating that thumbs up button. Midnight is wishing you that as well. I wish you the best today and always. I send you so, so much love, and I hope I illuminated your well-being today. Again, this is Jasmine Capella Wellness, starring out. Mm -hmm.